Hello, this is Jeff, and today is February the twenty ninth, two thousand and twenty four. The forty fifth Canadian federal election in Canada has not yet been announced. It is likely that the Canadian federal election will happen after the U.S. has had its presidential elections after November the fifth, two thousand and twenty four. What is important is that you and I are seeing what I would call a pre-election election, where some political parties in Canada right now are making maneuvers to determine who shall represent their own party to run in specific ridings. Zhou Tai, Zhang Gengei, he has announced that he's going to run for office. As the member of parliament for the riding of Markham Unionville, and he's running as a member of the Conservative Party of Canada. Based on what I know, the unofficial deadline to submit enough supporters to make you the official nominee of the Conservative Party of Canada is most likely going to be March the tenth, two thousand and twenty-four. That is a Sunday. And that gives you ten more days to take action to convince residents of the Markham Unionville riding to become a member of the Conservative Party of Canada. If you go to Joe Tay's website on the top of the screen, go all the way down, you will see purchase membership here. Click on that; it will bring you to the website of the Conservative Party. Pierre Polyev, go all the way down. In these three boxes, you will be able to download the membership form. You can then mail it to Ottawa, or you can call a one eight six six phone number. This is the form for the individual membership application. This is the form for the family membership application. Because there's only ten days until the deadline of March the tenth, if you are a supporter of Zheng Gengei, then what I call this final dash period, these last ten days, and in this final dash period, there are certain events that you need to do in order to sign up new party members. And why is that? Look at the top of the screen. Joe Tay has to submit the nomination paper, the application form called EC two zero zero one zero. And at a minimum, he has to get one hundred people living in the Markham Unionville riding to support him. This website suggests. That you submit at least one hundred and fifty signatures because some of them might be invalid because of improper address or identification. Therefore, in order for you to have more than one hundred people supporting you to run for office, get at least one hundred and fifty signatures. Therefore, if you are helping Zhang Gengei run any final dash events. To qualify him to become the official nominee, you need to help him get at least one hundred and fifty signatures. Now, this is the example of the form, and you need to scroll down all the way to section F, electors consenting to candidacy. This is mandatory, so every page you can put ten names, and for one hundred and fifty names, you need fifteen pages. Let's talk about how you can help Zhang Gengei sign up new party members during the last ten days, this final dash period. This message is for everyone. You can forward it to everyone you want, but some advice is specific to a few people. For example, if you are the host of a particular radio show on AM one four three zero AM Yesei Samling. And you know who you are. Then, in the next ten days, I suggest 
If you truly want to help Zhang Gengge, invite Zhang Gengge up to your radio show, so that Zhang Gengge can do something very specific. And the very specific activity that Zhang Gengge can do on your radio show is to announce where he is going to host or attend meet and greet events, so that residents of Markham Unionville. Can go and meet Zhang Gengge, listen to him talk, but most importantly, sign this particular form, so that the residents of Markham Unionville sign the electors consenting to candidacy section of the form to make Zhang Gengge eligible to become the nominee for the Conservative Party. So this is the first event that you can do. Specific to only a few people, final dash event number one. Invite Zhang Gengge to your AM one four three zero radio show so that Zhang Gengge can announce the meet and greet events he is hosting and attending from March the first Friday to March the tenth Sunday. This is the second thing you can do to help Zhang Gengge run for office. You are a community leader. That is the reason why I sent you my previous two messages, and this third message is to everyone, including you, the community leader. I want you, if you are genuinely sincere, to help Zhang Gengge run for office. Take any restaurant within the Markham Unionville riding, book an event, which means invite all your friends. To this dinner party at the restaurant, and invite Zhang Gengge to come to your meet and greet event, so that the residents within Markham Unionville riding can listen to Zhang Gengge talk. And then, most importantly, again, sign the form, Section F, electors consenting to candidacy, because you need at least 150 people to support Zhang Gengge. So final dash event number two as a community leader, host Zhang Gengge meet and greet events and invite your friends at any restaurant within the Markham Unionville riding. This is the third way to host a final dash event to sign up new party members for Zhang Gengge. Again, you are a community leader. Use your office boardroom, host a Zhang Gengge meet and greet event, and invite all your colleagues to listen to Zhang Gengge talk. And most importantly, sign the form, Section F, electors consenting to candidacy, because Zhang Gengge needs a hundred and fifty signatures. So final dash event number three, as a community leader. Host and Gengge meet and greet events and invite your colleagues in your office boardroom. This is the fourth way in which you can help Zhang Gengge get elected into office. As a community leader, host Zhang Gengge meet and greet events and invite your neighbors into your own home. Yes, you are using your own house as an open house. You are hosting an event as a community leader. You're inviting your neighbors, and you're inviting Zhang Gengge to come to your own home, so that your neighbors within the Markham Unionville area, within that riding, can sign up to become members of the Conservative Party. And again, most importantly, sign the form Section F: Electors consenting to candidacy. So that Zhang Gengge gets a hundred and fifty signatures. This is the fifth way during the final dash period that Zhang Gengge can sign up new party members. Now you are actually Zhang Gengge, and you are hosting meet and greet events within your Markham Unionville riding. So using all the media outlets that you have access to, Zhang Gengge. You go onto those media outlets and announce the time and place where you are appearing at meet and greet events hosted by your community leader friends and by yourself, 
so that residents within your Markham Unionville riding can come and see you talk. And most importantly, you are going to ask them to sign Section F, electors consenting to candidacy, because you, Zhang Gengge, need 150 signatures. And also, final dash event number six. Again, you are Zhang Gengge, and you are opening up your own house as an open house, and you are inviting your neighbors to come see you, you and your wife Angie, will be hosting your neighbors in your own home so that they can come, drop by, listen to you talk, and most importantly, sign the form, Section F, electors consenting to candidacy, because you need 150 signatures. The seventh way Zhang you can do during this final dash period is you go around the Markham Unionville riding and you knock on doors individually telling them, Hello, my name is Zhang Gengge and I am running for the position of Member of Parliament within the Markham Unionville riding and I need your support. And most importantly, have your neighbors sign Section F, electors consenting to candidacy because you need 150 signatures. So what am I going to do? What is Jeff going to do? Well, Jeff is doing nothing to support Zhang Gengge. I am doing nothing to support Zhang Gengge. I do not believe Zhang Gengge is the correct candidate to represent today's Canadians as a member of parliament because Zhang Gengge has not lived in Canada long enough to understand what today's Canadian values are. I like Zhang Gengge as a person. Zhang Gengge is one of my many teenage Cantonese pop idols from Hong Kong. I still like Zhang Gengge's songs and I still admire Zhang Gengge for his musical talents. Zhang Gengge is a great example of a Wong Si, a yellow Hong Konger, representing Guang Fuk Hong Kong, Si Dai Ga Ming, liberate Hong Kong, revolution of our times. However, when it comes to Guang Fuk Hong Kong, Si Dai Ga Ming, liberate Hong Kong, revolution of our times, then I believe there is an even greater example, a person currently living in Toronto, who is a Canadian citizen eligible to run for office. I believe Tin Jigin, Edward Chin, should be running for office either in the Markham Unionville riding or in another riding. So, who is Tin Jigin? Who is Edward Chin? There is a book that you must read if you wish to understand what Hong Kongers have gone through for the last decade. The book is called Among the Braves, Hope, Struggle and Exile in the Battle for Hong Kong and the Future of Global Democracy. In this book, you will learn of a person called Benny Tai Yu Ting, Tai Yu Ting Gao Sao, and he was an Associate Professor of Law at the University of Hong Kong. From Wikipedia, you will learn that Betty Tai Dai Yu Teng Gao Sao from 2013 launched and is known for his initiation of the Occupy Central with Love and Peace, as he considered Hong Kong to lack true universal suffrage and should participate in an Occupy movement to win universal suffrage in the 2017 Hong Kong chief executive election. Benny Tai, Dai Yu Ting, his suggestion ultimately resulted in the eruption of the umbrella movement the following year, that means 2014. This is the Wikipedia page of Occupy Central with Love and Peace. Yang Ngoi Yu Wo Ping, Jim Ling Zhong Wan. This is the Wikipedia page for the Umbrella Movement of 2014. In Cantonese, it's called Yusan Wandong. 
and to oversimplify the issue, the result of the 2014 Hong Kong protests, the Umbrella Revolution, led to the 2019 Hong Kong protests, which more Canadians are familiar with. Remember earlier I said to you, when it comes to Guang Fu Hong Kong, Si Dai Ga Ming, liberate Hong Kong, revolution of our times, I believe there is an even greater example, a person currently living in Toronto today who is a Canadian citizen eligible to run for office. That person is Tin Zikin, Edward Chin, and I believe Tin Zikin, Edward Chin should be running for office either in the Markham Unionville riding or in other ridings. So look at the screen on top. Who is Tin Zikin? The person on the right hand side holding the microphone dressed in black, that is Benny Tai, Dai Yu Ting Gao Sao. He's the guy that started 2014. Sitting right next to him in this picture in the white shirt, looking down at the notes that he has in his hands. This guy, this guy is Tin Zikin. Okay? Benny Tai and Tin Zikin are friends in Hong Kong. In fact, they went to the same high school in Hong Kong called Basui Lam Su Yun, Diocesan Boys School. I believe Da Yu Teng is about five years older than Qin Ji Gin. I also went to Diocesan Boys School, Basui Lam Su Yun, but when I went there, I did not know Da Yu Teng because he's graduated already. And when I went there, I did not know Qin Ji Gin because he's graduated already. I only knew Tin Zikin. Edward Chin had to escape from Hong Kong because he feared that he would be arrested. And he came to Vancouver, stayed there for a few months, and then he kind of toured around Canada. And one of his stops is Toronto. And it was only then that I met Tin Zikin the first time in my life. But from this picture, you can see that during the 2014 Umbrella Movement in Hong Kong, Benny Tai and Tin Zikin, they were side by side. This is another article published on August the 29th, 2014. The same background. The caption to this picture reads, Edward Chin at the center, organizer of Financial Professionals for Occupy Central and Benny Tai on the right side co-founder of Occupy Central at a rally Friday night outside government offices in Hong Kong. This is a newspaper article by South China Morning Post published September the 2nd, 2014. Occupy Central's Edward Chin blasts political decision to ax his newspaper column. The Hong Kong Economic Journal has scrapped political activist Edward Chin, Tin Zikin's weekly column, leading the hedge fund manager to blast the move as a political decision. This is Tin Zikin back in 2014. He looks a bit younger. This is another newspaper article by the South China Morning Post published September the 5th, 2014. Dear President Xi, please give us true democracy says Occupy Central in open letter. Occupy Central to publish second open letter to President Xi Jinping in international newspapers. This is Tin Zikin back in 2014. He looks a bit younger. This is an article published by CNBC, the business channel on September the 28th, 2014. Hong Kong protests explained. In this 4 minute and 52 second video, Tin Zikin Edward Chin explains Beijing needs to respond to demands. This is an article by CNN Money, published October 2nd, 2014. Meet the hedge fund guy backing Hong Kong protests. This is a picture of Tin Zikin, and the caption reads, Edward Chin used to run hedge funds. Now he's trying to beat Beijing. So now that Tin Zikin, Edward Chin has left Hong Kong and is in Toronto, what is he doing now? Tin Zikin, Edward Chin, 
has a YouTube channel. He started this YouTube channel on May twenty ninth, two thousand and twenty. Today is two thousand and twenty four, February the twenty ninth. It has two thousand three hundred and fourteen videos, has twenty three million eight hundred twenty two thousand five hundred and forty six views, and he has seventy seven thousand nine hundred subscribers. Qin Jigin also recently wrote a book. He's written ten books. This is book number ten. It's called the Path to True Freedom. 对冲人生路，自由价更高。This book has two sides. One side is in Cantonese Chinese traditional characters, and one side is in English. This is my review. I wrote this review on January the nineteenth, two thousand and twenty-four. An excellent collection of essays by Ed Chin, Qin Jigin. Touching on many insightful topics, written throughout the years of his life and career across two continents, Jeff Tam, Toronto, Canada. This is a picture of the English cover. You will see on the bottom it says recommended by Mark Clifford of Apple Daily, Pingo Yatbo, and Benedict Rogers of Hong Kong Watch. This is the preface. You can buy the book and read it. This is the cover of the Chinese side. 对冲人生路，自由价更高。This is Ed Chin, Qin Jigin, doing his YouTube show. He's introducing the book to you and I. In this particular picture, look on the left. This guy is Qin Jigin holding the mic. Right next to him is Benny Tai, Da Yu Ting, and right next to Da Yu Ting is. Mo Mangjing, Claudia Mo, a Hong Kong legislator who is currently in jail. This is Edward Chen, Qin Jigin, being interviewed by Sam Yok Fei. He's a good political commentator that also has his YouTube show. This is a positive review of Edward Chen's book by Sam Yok Fei. 国际关系学者。International relations scholar Sam Yok Fei, 好评推荐 positive review and recommendation. This is Tian Zijin Edward Chin appearing in Taiwan to promote his new book. This particular bookstore, if you would remember, a story in Hong Kong where five owners of Tong Lo Wan Su Dim Causeway Bay Bookstore were abducted. By the Communist Party of China, back into mainland China, and were put in jail illegally by the CCP. Eventually, some were released back to Hong Kong, and this person went to Taiwan and opened up a similar bookstore, selling books that could not be sold in Hong Kong because the CCP forbids it. So this is Taiwan's version of Tong Lo Wan Su Dim. And Ed Chin is sitting in that Taiwan Tong Lo Wan Su Dim promoting his new book. This is the owner and Qin Zijin together in the bookstore. This is Qin Zijin signing his book. This is Qin Zijin being interviewed by Photon Media Guang Chun Mui about his new book. This is the YouTube video by Free Hong Kong, featuring Qin Zijin's new book launch. This is another article by RFA. Interviewing Qin Zijin regarding his new book. So now you understand who Qin Zijin is, and now you understand why I believe that Qin Zijin is the better candidate to represent Guangfuk Hong Kong Zidai Gaming. Why Qin Zijin is the better candidate to represent Hong Kongers. If you've made it so far to this video, I have more bad news for you. You are backing a strategically flawed campaign. 策略上有缺陷的競選活動 I've told you that you are backing the wrong candidate. You should be backing Qin Zijin. You should also be running for office in another riding. This is the Markham Unionville riding. The incumbent is a liberal. 
His name is Paul Chang. This is his page on the House of Commons website. Bob Sawyer was the person who was the member of parliament before Paul Chang. Bob Sawyer lost to Paul Chang, but Bob Sawyer is running again in the upcoming federal election, which has not yet been announced. But you and I, who are connected enough, know that Bob Saraya is coming back, and Bob Saraya is doing his best to become the party nominee. And there could only be one party nominee within the Conservative Party, and I believe Bob Saraya is going to get the nominee. Zhang Gengke, in his Hong Kong Station YouTube show. Did an analysis of the demographics of the Markham Unionville riding. You can obtain the same information from the Wikipedia page under the section of demographics. Ethnic groups: 66.6 Chinese. Languages: 29.5 percent Yu Y U E. It means Cantonese. Yu Yu. Twenty-nine point five percent. Of the people within the Markham Unionville riding speak Guangdonghua, Cantonese. Twenty-eight point four percent English, who might represent Hong Kongers who prefer to say that their language is English. Twenty point seven percent Mandarin. One point six percent speaks Tamil. Total population is one hundred and twenty-eight thousand three hundred and eight. And electors registered to vote eighty-seven thousand seven hundred and eighty-one. But what specifically happened between Paul Deng as a liberal and Bob Sawyer as a conservative during the previous, the forty-fourth federal election in the year two thousand and twenty-one? This column, if you can see, the fonts are very small. Is Paul Deng? And this column is Bob Sawyer. Let me scroll down for you. And the final numbers are to be read as follows. On the right-hand side, eighty-seven thousand seven hundred and seventy-five residents within the Markham Unionville riding registered to vote, and from that, forty-five thousand. Six hundred and seventy-six residents within the Markham Unionville riding actually showed up to vote. Out of that, eighteen thousand nine hundred and fifty-nine voters within the Markham Unionville riding voted for Bob Sawyer, which represented forty-one point nine percent of the votes, and for Paul Deng. Twenty-one thousand nine hundred and fifty-eight voters, representing forty-eight point six percent of the voters, voted for Paul Chang, and that is why at the bottom you would see elected candidate Paul Chang. So the Liberals won and currently holds the seat of Member of Parliament in the Markham Unionville riding. This means that this guy not only needs to sign up 150 people before March the 10th, so that he might qualify to become the nominee. He then needs to win over Bob Sawyer as the nominee for Markham Unionville, and then most likely have to have 22,000 votes in order to win. I do not think this guy can do it. I do not think Zhang Gengke can do it. I believe if anyone can do it, that person would be Jin Jigin Edward Chin. So, strategically flawed campaign. Tactically, you are backing the wrong candidate. Secondly, you should be running for office in another riding. For example, why not run against this guy?
in the Don Valley North riding. If you are a Hong Konger, you know what I'm talking about. How about running against this woman in the Markham Thornhill riding? If you are a Hong Konger, you know what I am talking about. How about running against this guy in the Scarborough North riding? If you are a Hong Konger, you know what I am talking about. How about running in Durham, currently vacant? How about running in Toronto, St. Paul's riding, currently vacant? How about running against this guy? Well, it's a joke, okay? So far, this video has been very serious. I just wanted to insert a political joke. However, to some people, this is not a joke. And here's the reason why. Do you recall that the current Stream A and Stream B programs to help Hong Kongers come to Canada are policies by Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and the Liberal Party to help Hong Kongers? Look at this press release. November the 12th, 2020, Canada announces immigration measures supporting Hong Kong residents and Canadians in Hong Kong. Look at this web page. Permanent residence pathways for Hong Kong residents who can apply. Stream A, in Canada graduates. Stream B, Canadian work experience you and I both know, and you who's watching this video right now, you might be one of those Stream A and Stream B people who are currently in Canada because the incumbent Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and the Liberal Party has given you this program to help you, a Hong Konger, come to Canada. And if that is the case, why is Deng Gingge running against the Liberal Party as a Conservative. Why is he doing that? Strategically flawed campaign. If that is the case, then why are you receiving this message from me? I am sending you this message because you are my personal friend. And I am telling you my ideas so that if you insist on helping Zhang Gingge in this strategically flawed campaign, at least you are using your time and your energy in the most efficient way. I am certainly not endorsing Zhang Gingge as the candidate for office because I believe Qin Jigin Edward Chin is the better candidate. I am definitely not endorsing Deng Gingge as the candidate for office because I believe Qin Jigin is the better candidate. Just as an executive summary, here are the final dash events to sign up new party members. Number one, invite Deng Gingge to your radio show so that Zhang Gingge can announce, meet and greet events he is hosting and attending during this final dash period, March the 1st Friday to March the 10th Sunday. Final dash event number two, you as a community leader, you host Zhang Gingge meet and greet events and invite your friends to sign up to support Zhang Gingge. Final dash event number three. You are a community leader and you host Zhang Gingge meet and greet events and invite your colleagues to support Zhang Gingge. Final dash event number four. You are a community leader and you host Zhang Gingge meet and greet events and invite your neighbors to sign up to support Zhang Gingge. Final dash event number five. You are Zhang Gingge, 
and you host meet and greet events within your Markham Unionville riding. You announce the time and place where you will be. People show up, and you sign them up to support you. Final dash event number six. You are Zhang Gengge, and you host open house events with your wife at your own home, so that your neighbors living in the Markham Unionville riding can come to your house and you sign them up to support you. Final dash event number seven. You are Zhang Gengge, and you knock on doors within your own Markham Unionville riding and you ask your neighbors to sign up to support you. So those are the activities and the unofficial deadline based on what I know is March the 10th, 2024, Sunday. Which means that if you call the 1866 number, it might be March the 10th to be safe before Friday, March the 8th, 2024. So, how do you like this video? Do you still like me? Send your feedback to me. If you do not know me, then send it by email. Jeff at 2025election.ca And if you know me, then use WhatsApp. Now, think carefully what you want to say. Choose your words wisely and write them down clearly so that you and I can subsequently take action together to elect our public servant to office. I am Jeff, I am a proud Hong Konger, and I am a proud Canadian. Gong Fuk Hong Gong, Si Doi Ga Ming.